Here is another question from one of our viewers. They wanted to know how you could transfer a load using squash blocks if the joists are running parallel to the walls below. And even though I couldn't find any information about it, I did find a picture on one of the joist manufacturers' technical websites and found this method here. You're just simply going to use a web stiffener and a 2x4. You're going to cut the 2x4 a sixteenth of an inch taller than the floor joist. And I think this could cause squeaking. And in my opinion, now keep in mind this is just my opinion, I would make the blocks even with the top of the floor joist. But I'm not the manufacturer, so make sure that you read the installation instructions from the manufacturer of your floor joist. And like I said, they are suggesting that these blocks need to be a sixteenth of an inch taller than the floor joist. And I'm not going to go over the nailing because I already made a video on this for joists that run perpendicular to the wall framing. And to make it easy for you, I'm not going to make you look for the other video. I'm going to add it to this video, making it the second part of the video. So make sure that you watch that also. Now, if you don't want to do this because you're worried about floor squeaking, then simply frame the wall to where the top of the wall is going to be even with the top of the floor joist. And the only way this is going to work will be if this wall is a load-bearing wall and has a footing underneath it, which is what we have in this video. Keep in mind this is just another one of our home building projects. And you can find links to those at our website by simply clicking on the home building tab. It should be on that page. This is the first video in a series that I'm planning on making to provide people with more information about details that might be provided to you in a lumber manufacturer's assembly catalog. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the truss joist from Weyerhaeuser and how you might use squash blocks or regular blocks to transfer the load from a wall above. So this would be a wall that's sitting directly above the lower wall along with what the manufacturer suggests you could use. Keep in mind that a structural engineer could provide you with different details altogether. So in our first example, we are going to use the truss, the TJIs themselves, and cut them into blocks. And even though I couldn't find any information on where the blocks need to be located, I like to line one side of them up with one side of the wall framing. And the reason for that would be to provide the electricians or maybe the plumbers with some spots they can drill their holes through without damaging the blocks. And another example would be to add web stiffeners. And I will provide you with nailing information in the second half of the video. Now keep in mind that there is usually going to be a gap in between the top of the web stiffener and the bottom of the upper cord. So they will be tight on the bottom. There will be a gap here. However, that gap will vary depending upon the joist you are going to be using. And I'll provide you with a little more information about the web stiffeners in the second half of the video. In the next method, we will be using the inch and an eighth rim board provided by the manufacturer along with the web stiffeners. Now keep in mind that you do not want to use construction standard lumber here because it could shrink. And another option might be to use a laminated strand board sizes between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half thick. Next up, we're going to use 2x4 squash blocks. And if you have a 2x6 wall, you're probably going to use a 2x6 along with the web stiffeners. And I do remember installing these years ago without a web stiffener. And I only used one on one side. I did not have them on both sides. And even though I couldn't find that in the installation instructions, that might be another possibility also. And the squash blocks need to be a sixteenth of an inch taller than the floor joist. And even though I couldn't find any information on that, my guess is that it has something to do with the construction standard lumber shrinking. And even if that isn't the reason why, it might not be a bad idea to use kiln dried lumber for your squash blocks. And I just threw this one in here. I did not find this assembly method in the product information from the manufacturer. But you can see the 16th of an inch taller squash block here. And there's a good chance it's going to be taller than the other materials I mentioned for the blocking. 
And the manufacturer also suggested using solid blocking underneath any type of structural post that is going to be transferring loads through the walls. And even though I'm showing you a section of the post here that's the same size, the manufacturer is suggesting that you can use multiple squash blocks just as long as they fill the area under the post. And if we move the post over something like this, then we're going to need to use blocks on each side. And don't forget that even though I'm not showing it in this example, if you have a support post transferring a load through a lower wall, then there's a good chance you're going to need a post in the lower wall along with a footing to support the post in the building foundation. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the nailing for the squash blocks where the manufacturer recommends using a three inch nail to attach the block to the upper and lower flange. And even though you might be thinking about making it a little stronger, I know you construction workers out there who wanna just throw a few more nails into everything, then I would suggest avoid doing it unless you find something suggesting that the manufacturer allows it. And the manufacturer recommends using a two and a half inch nail that will be slightly angled, one on each side, going through the bottom flange into the top wall framing plate. And we will also be using three two and a half inch nails to attach the web stiffeners together. And it looks like the location of the bottom nail needs to be an inch above the bottom flange, and the upper nail needs to be an inch below the bottom of the top flange and then you would center this nail and it looks like these nails would center over the wall framing and these nails will need to be clenched or bent over and there is also a minimum width requirement and it looks like that's going to be 2 and 15 sixteenths of an inch I don't know why they just couldn't have made it three inches except for the 560 joist series and even though I didn't find a lot of information on how to attach the blocks that will be cut from the truss joist to the truss joist, I would imagine that face nailing like this would be fine or toe nailing. I'm just not 100% convinced that you can't damage the flanges, the upper flange or the lower flange by driving a bunch of nails in them. So you might want to limit the amount of nails you use unless you can figure out exactly where it's mentioned or specified in the installation instructions or by a structural engineer while connecting the blocks to the flange. And I did find a video from Warehouser suggesting that two nails will be fine to attach the bottom flange to the wall framing plate. And for the solid blocking, we are going to have nails going through the wall framing plate into the blocks, and I believe they are spaced 12 inches on center. There's a good chance you're also going to have eight D nails, six inches on center, attaching the floor sheathing to the blocking, which tells me that we don't really need to get too carried away with the nailing of the blocking into the top flange, where the nails could actually split the top flange. Because the floor sheathing and bottom plate wall framing nailing is going to help to connect everything together. And even though the other blocks only had two nails in them, I did find something suggesting that you might need to use three nails in this area or have them spaced six inches on center. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at nailing through the web stiffener into the blocking. And even though I couldn't find something like this from the product manufacturer, it seems like it might do a better job than nailing through the upper flange, along with toe nailing the blocking into the web stiffener. But again, I couldn't find any information on this from the product manufacturer. I'm just kind of throwing this out there, along with a toenail like this going through the block into either the upper flange or the web stiffener. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. If you're going to use four toenails to attach the blocks to the top flange, I think something like this is going to split the flange. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.